Wait, 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 wait. Stop me if you have heard this before. Quinn Ewers looks good in a t-shirt and short. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. On today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, we're discussing some winter workout standouts headlined by Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning. Also, JT Sanders, top 35 tight end in the country on the field, in my opinion, emerging as a vocal leader for this Texas Longhorns football team off the field ahead of a very important season for the Texas Longhorns football team. All of that and more on today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So last night around 5 or 6 p.m. Central, dinner time, right, 24-7 Sports put out this article written by Hudson Standish, uh, headlining some winter workout standouts, also some recruiting tidbits in here, a lot of great stuff for Longhorn fans. If you haven't checked out this article uh, please do so when you get a chance. And before we get into who's been standing out in winter workouts thus far, it's a very interesting nugget um, about the Longhorns national title odds <laughs> this year, right? Get that Kool-Aid out. So going into the 2023 season, the Texas Longhorns have their best national championship odds that they've had since 2010. So Vegas believes this 2023 team has their best chance to win a national title since the 2010 Texas team at plus 1700 odds. If you don't bet, that means putting a hundred dollars down on Texas to win the national championship right now, not advising it would win you $1,700 in January after it happens. So that's really good odds for a team that did not win their bowl game and did not make the conference championship game at all. So I've continued to say that this year is big 12 championship or bust for the Longhorns. And it seems as though Vegas believes this Texas football team will be really good in 2023 as well. And if this Texas football team is going to be really good in 2023, that's going to fall on the shoulders and right arm of Quinn Ewers quite literally. And in this article, it says that Quinn Ewers has shown an improved command of the offense and the team as a whole during workouts and throwing sessions thus far in winter workouts. When asked what the biggest change for Ewers will be this off season and this season, they said consistency. He has a much better grasp of what to do day to day as the quarterback at Texas. And it is reflected in how he's attacking his off season workouts. And last year at times we saw Quinn Ewers live up to his recruiting billing, right? Being one of the highest rated recruits ever to come out of high school. We saw that jump off the screen in the Oklahoma game, in the Alabama game, in the last three quarters of the Washington game where he played more than well enough to win that football game. Right. But then there were also times where, you know, TCU and Oklahoma state game, Quinn Ewers looked unrecognizable out there, right? That safety that he caused against Baylor, that didn't look like a freshman mistake, right? You were wondering what was going on with Quinn Ewers, but it was also easy to forget. And maybe I put too much pressure on the young King last year that he was 19 years old. He had missed an important season of development and playing football going to Ohio State instead of playing his senior year at South Lake Carroll. And it's really hard for a red shirt, essentially true freshman, to come in to a program like Texas and be really good at the quarterback position right away, right? But now with another year of development under his belt, right, another offseason under his belt, more familiarity in Sark's system, more familiarity with his pass catchers, right, bringing back pretty much all of them and adding talent, uh, to that room, you know, I think Quinn Ewers has lost some, uh, you know, that baby fat that I'm just here to play quarterback fat. He's cut the mullet, right? No more party in the back. He's all business. But I think he just understands the urgency that's surrounding him uh, going into the season. I think he understands with Bijan and Roshan gone, this is his team now, right? If this team is going to win 10 games in 2023, if this team is going to get back to the Big 12 championship game for the first time since 2018, it's going to be on the shoulders and the arm of Quinn Ewers. And it seems like he's taking that challenge head on. And I respect Quinn Ewers to show a lot more consistency this year and be closer to that quarterback that was the highest rated recruit coming out of high school in his class and one of the highest recruits ever alongside Arch Manning 
and Vince Young. Wonder what they have in common, right? Speaking of Arch Manning, the same source said that he has really blown away our group of wideouts with how consistently perfect his ball placement is on air or against other DBs. There are times where he'll throw a perfect ball for a completion and still have calm and detailed notes for receivers on how to improve their routes. He's been everything they've expected him to be so far. But again, it's early. Once again, it's early, right? I know I said get that Kool-Aid out, but we haven't even made it to spring ball yet. And we're already talking about Arch Manning's ball placement, <laughs> right? But nonetheless, this is not surprising, right? We know the pedigree that Arch Manning came in with, right? Which is why he's one of the most hype recruits ever. Speaking of, you know, Quinn Ewers, but we know that Arch Manning is going to come in and do everything the right way, right? From his mechanics to his footwork to his leadership to um, attacking the playbook, right? I have no doubt in my mind that when Arch Manning gets his time to shine, he will do just that if the development goes to task. And how much of a storybook ending is it for Arch Manning that his career will be spent in the SEC, right? After, you know, Peyton did what he did at Tennessee and Eli did what he did at Ole Miss, right? And how you got Arch Manning at Texas who will be playing football in the SEC. Like I said, if he plays two years as a starter at the University of Texas after this year, his last home game will be against Texas A&M in DKR, right? Movie producers can't write a better script than that. And I think him being on campus right now in a weird way puts pressure on Quinn Ewers and also takes pressure off of Quinn Ewers because it puts pressure on Quinn Ewers because he's a Manning, right? He has all of the hype. He's going to do everything the right way. And I think him being in that room kind of forces Quinn Ewers to elevate his game, right? Iron sharpens iron. In a weird way, it's going to take pressure off of Quinn Ewers because Quinn Ewers was that golden boy last year right, where they dissected everything he did. Everything was about Quinn Ewers, right? He has to win the job. How would Texas look, right? He's fifth in the Heisman odds before he ever threw a collegiate pass, all right? Now they're dissecting everything from Arch Manning to him losing his uh, ID, to his class schedule, to him riding around campus on a scooter, and Quinn Ewers can just focus on what really matters most, right, which is development and football. So I think Arch Manning there will put pressure on Quinn Ewers in a good way, iron sharpens iron, and it'll also take pressure off of him and just allow him to focus on football. Speaking of some players that Arch Manning and Quinn Ewers will be throwing to this year, three new wide receivers on the Texas football team have been mentioned as standouts in winter workouts. A.D. Mitchell was mentioned as a standout the last time we did this episode, the last time an article like this dropped. And, I mean, it's no surprise there. He looks good in winter workouts. He's balled out in the national championship game, right? When you've caught a touchdown, pass in every college football game you've played in when you caught the go-ahead touchdown in the semifinal game against Ohio State to get to the national championship game when you caught the go-ahead touchdown against Alabama last year that put Georgia up for good to win their first national championship game since the 80s and then to add insult to injury we didn't even need it right but when you caught a touchdown pass against TCU this year to go up 38 points at halftime TCU yeah, I'm not surprised at all that A.D. Mitchell was balling out in winter workouts. Jonte Cook was also mentioned. They said he's gained 15 pounds of muscle. It's crazy that, you know, he comes from a premier high school program in, in DeSoto, but that college strength and training is different, man. Shout out Coach Beck, right? They said Cedric Baxter did put on 8 to 10 pounds of muscle already, and Jonte Cook putting on 15 pounds of muscle. If he can maintain that explosiveness, that agility, off the line of scrimmage and his ability to run routes with 15 more pounds of muscle, he's going to be really scary at the wide receiver position. But coming out of high school, he's the number one wide receiver in Texas. And I think he has the polish to, you know, be a consistent player for this Texas football team right now on the field. I think this wide receiver room is really stacked right now, especially with Jordan Whittington coming back and A.D. Mitchell coming in. So I would expect Jonte Cook to be maybe in the 20 to 30, maybe 40 catch range this season. But I think if need be, he could step right into a role like Evan Stewart did last year at Texas A&M, where I think he was their leading receiver with 600 yards receiving and like two or three touchdowns. I think Jonte Cook from day one could give you that if need be for the Texas football team. And then DeAndre Moore, right? Speaking of prestigious high school programs, he comes from St. John Bosco, which might be the premier program in high school football right now. They just won the high school national championship. They dominate in the state of California. They came down to Allen. I know it's not Kyler Murray's Allen anymore, but they beat the breaks off of Allen in the first game of the season. So when you come from a high school program like that, I expect the coaching to be top notch. I expect the development to be top notch and I expect the players to be top notch. And from this article, it sounds like DeAndre Moore is going to find his way on the field this season at the wide receiver position as well. Maybe a reason Savion Red uh, was moved to running back a few weeks ago. 
On the defensive side of the ball, three true freshmen were mentioned, and we've talked at nauseum about how, you know, it was cool, you know, to get Arch Manning, and you knew that getting Arch Manning, you would bring a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball, right? Players are going to want to come play with Arch Manning, receivers, running backs, tight ends, and offensive linemen. What they were able to do on the defensive side of the ball in this class was very impressive to me. And three players mentioned in this article, Colton Vasic, Leona LaFowle, and Malik Muhammad. So they talked about Leona LaFowle showing up on day one, ready to work, and has lived up to the A-plus teammate persona that we would constantly hear about when he was a star at the linebacker position in Hawaii. And the thing I love about Leona LaFowle is he's one of those players that he doesn't do anything at an elite level, right? But he does everything at a good to great level. Right. He doesn't have that one elite trait that stands out. But whatever you put him on the football field and tell him to do, he'll at least be able to do at an above average level. And I think he's going to bring a lot of playmaking and leadership to the linebacker position at the 40 acres. Colton Bassett, right. Coming from that premier high school program in Austin Westlake, where I think he won three national championships in his four years as a student there. State championships, I should say. My bad. But we saw it last year with Ethan Burke coming from Westlake. Right. In situational passing downs when he was brought in as a pass rusher he shined right he's one of the highest graded defenders on the texas football team last year he just didn't have the snaps to necessarily match that impact but to me colton vasic has a chance to be better than ethan burke and eventually be kind of that standout edge for this texas football team because he's a really good run stuffer he has an unstoppable motor he has enough pass rush capability right now to get to the quarterback consistently and i think he's only going to get better right he has that grit and that motor to be great coming from the type of program where he excelled at at westlake and so i think colton Vasquez is going to be really good it was very important that they flipped him from oklahoma not from just an on the field standpoint you know what he's able to do but an optic standpoint right you can't have a texas legacy going to play for brent venables in the sooners come on now and then malik muhammad who was widely regarded as the number two cornerback in the country behind kermani mcclain who was rated as the highest defensive player in the country period right it's no shame in that and we know that he's a very you know technically sound player somebody that can step in right away if need be at the corner position and and play really well for the longhorns i believe somebody that led you know sock to two straight state championships right his last two years in high school and i've said a million times you know nick saban as known, you know, for what he's been able to do on the defensive side of the ball, the pedigree of DBs he has put into the NFL. And we know that he likes to play a lot of press man coverage, right? That's what they're going to do at Alabama. And, you know, he targeted two corners to do that in this class, Kamani McClain and Malik Muhammad. I think that speaks volumes to the pedigree and the talent Malik Muhammad has and what he'll be able to bring to the 40 acres once that's unleashed. And then when you just look at that cornerback room right now, it's a lot of talent there, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Jalen Ford, right? the big 12 defensive player of the year oh he didn't win it hmm well the should have been big 12 defensive player of the year Jalen Ford has emerged as a leader on the team and I think when you play like that of course you're going to be a leader by default but also when you play like that that shows that you're doing everything off the field to be able to produce like that on the field and so I'm glad that Jalen Ford has taken a leadership role with this team but also he has taken Anthony Hill under his wing right probably the highlight of the defensive players in this 2023 class is somebody that is probably the prime candidate in this class outside of Cedric Baxter to have a consistent role from day one, right? When you lost Diamante Tucker Dorsey and DeMarvian Overshawn at that linebacker position, you said who was going to replace them next to Jalen Ford. Hello, <laughs> I'll take Anthony Hill on line one. I expect a big year from him as well. Him being the number one linebacker in the country, I think we're going to see that from day one against Rice. Sorry, JT Daniels. And then Terrence Brooks is the last player that mentioned. So we saw him come on strong late in the season at the corner position. And I would expect him to have a bigger role. I'm not sure if he'll start because you brought in Gavin Holmes. You return Jade Barron, uh, Ryan Watts. You also bring in uh, Malik Muhammad. Jalen Gilbo uh, was really good for this Texas football team last year. But like I said, Terrence Brooks really shined, you know, coming down this, the stretch last year. He played well in the TCU game. There was that one blown coverage. I think it was more on Anthony Cook to Quentin Johnson. But um, he played well in that TCU game. and should have had a pick six in the Washington game. So um, he looked really good at the cornerback position last year. And in a bigger role this year, I, I think he'll be better. And, you know, we talked about the depth at the safety position when we brought in Jalen Catalan and Warren Robertson. But I kind of just highlighted it. Look at the depth in the DB room, period, right? It's going to be a lot of talented players at that corner position next year. And uh, Pete Kakowski should have that defense and that DB unit, safety and corner, uh, looking really nice. So, 
encouraging to see some of these players standing out in winter workouts, especially Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, and then some of the three true freshman defensive standouts and Leona LaFowle, um, Anthony Hill, of course, and then Colton Basic and Malik Muhammad. This is a very important 2023 season for the Texas Longhorns, a season where expect expectations are lofty, right? The expectations are high. And so uh, the players that are balling in winter workouts right now, it's going to have to translate on the field this season uh, for Texas, you know, to make it to the Big 12 championship game and hopefully win it. The midway point of the NBA season is here. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet does not win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. So Jatavian Sanders was really good last year. He was like the number 16th or 17th rated player coming out of high school in the 2021 class. You know, Quinn Ewers was the number one player. Uh, JT Sanders was like number 16. Xavier Worthy was like 47 or 48. So that just kind of gives you uh, some, I guess, background or insight on how talented of a player he was coming out of high school. And really the only debate was what side of the field he was going to play on, right? Whether it was tight end or edge. And a lot of people wanted him to play edge, but when Steve Sarkeesian was brought in, you know, he said he was going to play tight end. But in that first season, he didn't have a catch. We didn't know what to expect from JT Sanders coming into the season. We thought Jaleel Billingsley, you know, might be the number one tight end over JT Sanders. And really from game one, when he came out with six catches for 85 yards uh, against ULM, it probably was the best player on the field. We saw that JT Sanders was going to be different, right? And we knew that he had a chance to be really good and explosive in the receiving game, right? Bring something to the tight end position Texas hadn't had in a while. I mean, he was breaking tight end records that had stood at Texas since 2007 and 2011 this season in his first year as a full-time starter. The question we had about him was, would he be able to block at – a very high level. Like I said, we were going to be in 12 personnel last year, 40% of the time. He didn't know that at the time, but that's what ended up happening. You needed JT Sanders to excel in the blocking game. And I think he more than exceeded expectations in that realm. And that's why he enters the 2023 season as one of the best tight ends in the country. And if it wasn't for Brock Bowers, who is a household name as a college tight end, which is crazy, we would be talking more about JT Sanders on a national level. But this is another story from 24-7 Sports talking about how he has emerged as a vocal leader for the Texas Longhorns football team. And the source said the guy gets it, how to work, how to push, and how to hold each other accountable, right, or hold others accountable on the Texas football team. And when I thought about it, before I get into some more quotes from the article, this makes perfect sense. Because when I was thinking about the offense, I'm like, who would be the prime candidates to replace B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson as leaders of the Texas football team. And I think anybody can lead, but there's formulas for you being a better leader, right? And it helps if you're a really good player and have a consistent role on this football team. So the first one was Quinn Ewers. I'm like, okay, Quinn Ewers is going to have to be a natural leader for this Texas football team. But then I'm like, Quinn Ewers is also the type of player he strikes me as he's more of a lead by example, right? He's not going to be a rah, rah vocal leader, but he's just going to come in and do what he needs to do. And the quarterback is a natural leading position. So if he comes in, plays well, does what he needs to do, I think that he'll be a leader by that regard, but not a vocal leader, right? Jordan Whittington would probably be the next candidate. The only thing is, I'm not sure what role Jordan Whittington is going to have, right? A.D. Mitchell, John T. Cook, DeAndre Moore, Isaiah Nay or Xavier Worthy, we would all expect them to have a role in the receiving room. Where does that leave Jordan Whittington, right? Also, we're still going to run the ball a lot. You're still going to throw the ball to JT Sanders a lot. I'm not sure how consistent Jordan Whittington's role will be this year, if he'll even have the role that he had last year. So, yeah, he could be a leader, but it's hard to lead from the sidelines. Roshan Johnson was the backup to B. John Robinson, but he still was getting, what, 12 to 15 touches a game at times. That's not going to be the case for Jordan Whittington. So I just don't know how much you can lead on the sidelines. But Jordan Whittington will be a leader for this football team. Kelvin Banks is one of the best players in the country at his position, but he doesn't strike me as a vocal leader as well. 
you don't know who's going to lead in the running back room. The running back room is fairly young in terms of experience. And then the only other candidate I would say is Xavier Worthy, and that's a no, <laughs> right? Based on what we see the last two years as far as leadership, that's a no. And that's fine. He can still be a really good football player. He just can't be a leader for the Longhorns. JT Sanders is the prime candidate, right? Somebody that's been on campus now. This will be his third year. He has the experience. Somebody that players will listen to. He's one of the top five players in the country at his position. And somebody that wants to be great and wants to win. This is somebody that came into college not being a great blocker at all. And in two years, it's become a strength for him. As this source says, right? He gets it. He knows how to work. He knows how to push each other. And he knows how to hold others accountable. And that's why he's emerging as a vocal leader, taking that place of B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson. And that makes perfect sense to me. He's the perfect candidate on this offense to be a vocal leader. And they mentioned a quote that he gave before the Alabama game that this is when they knew that he had the type of chops to be not only a great player at the University of Texas, but a great locker room presence and leader for the Texas football team. This is what he said after ULM before Alabama, the biggest game in probably everybody on this team's lives at that point. I just know we have to have one of the best weeks of practice we've ever had. We know Bama's not a pushover at all. They could blow us out easily if we don't execute the game plan. So I just know as a team, we need to have the best practice we've ever had this week in every aspect, special teams, offense, and defense, and execute the game plan for sure. That was him after his first game as a starter for this Texas football team. Going into this 2023 season, where for me, it's Big 12 championship or bust, if Texas wants to achieve that goal, JT Sanders is going to have to match his production on the field last year and be that vocal leader we saw in flashes last year in a consistent role for this Texas football team in 2023. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hook them. Peace.